Okay, so we're now ready to look specifically at structural reliability analysis. So in the first lecture, we discussed the ideas around random variables, and then we considered some ideas around the use of sampling to estimate the parameters that describe those uh, distributions. Um, now we're going to look at how we can determine very low failure probabilities in the context of structural engineering. Okay, so let's start off with a very simple um, example where we have a steel rod with a yield stress tau of y subjected to some imposed tensile load qt. Specifically what we're going to do is to quantify the reserved resistance capacity that this the, the rod has in holding this um, imposed load by considering the difference between the maximum load that it can hold and the load that is required to hold. And we'll express that difference as g and refer to it in general as the performance function. Now, whenever the load that it's required to hold is larger than the load that it can hold, then g will be negative. And, and in that case, we will assume that failure has occurred. So in that sense, then, the limit state function is the condition where failure is reached, so specifically when the performance function has a value of, of zero. So make sure that you understand the difference between specifically the limit state function and more generally the performance function. Now to begin with, let's take the, the, the simple case where both the resistance capacity and uh, the imposed load are normally distributed with uh, these parameters. In that case, because the performance function is a linear combination of the two, the performance function itself will also be normally distributed um, with parameters that can be very simply calculated from the parameters of the resistance and the imposed load. What we, what we can further do is construct a uh, standard normal equivalent of the uh, performance function by subtracting the mean and normalizing. If we now substitute uh, our expressions for the uh, mean and the variance of the performance function, um, we can determine the value of ug corresponding to the limit state condition. We're going, to, we're going to call that particular value of g the design point, ug star, and we're further going to set sorry, its magnitude equal to beta, which is to say we're going to measure the distance from zero to the point where failure occurs uh, in standard normal units now the probability of failure that corresponds to that beta value can be simply calculated from the ca standard normal cumulative distribution function. And, and so beta actually gives us an alternative uh, measure of the probability of failure, the reliability index. Now one of the reasons beta is useful is because it, it, it has very simple units. It, uh, where the probabilities of failure that we're going to be dealing with are commonly on the order of 10 to the negative 3 or 10 to the negative 4, uh, beta will be on of order uh, unity, so it's going to have values between 3 and 4. Now up to this point I've, I've made no reference to time when I was referring to failure. I was, simply, I was simply assuming that a given instance of a load occurs and, and the probability of failure was, was, was in reference to that single instance of the load. Now in structural engineering we, we, we tend to deal with structures that are uh, that are around for many years and are sub and are subjected to environmental loads and uh, imposed loads that vary with time. So the way we get around this problem is by specifically considering uh, the extreme values that our loads can take. And, and for that reason we end up using extreme value distributions, like for example the, gum the Gumbel distribution that we discussed in the first set of lectures. Uh, so in general, what extreme value distributions would describe are the maximum values for a given process that, would con that one can expect to find within a given, uh, within a given period. So for example, for some uh, normally distributed parent process, the corresponding annual maxima are Gumbel distributed, and, are sh uh, and their distribution are shown by this red curve. Uh, if one were to look at um, the distribution of the maximum values that one would expect within 50-year periods, those values will be distributed according to this blue curve. So in specifying the distributions of our loads, we always do it in reference to some time period within which, for which that distribution uh, describes the maximum value. 
Now this highlights a, a more general problem that we have in reliability analysis, which is that our descriptions of the loads, and in fact of the resistance as well, are generally not normally distributed. And so as a consequence, the performance function is also not normally distributed. Uh, so the fairly simple analysis we did a couple of slides ago where uh, we were able to determine the reliability index analytically in terms of the parameters of the resist resistance and of the loading uh, cannot be performed. And so we cannot find the uh, reliability index analytically. So, so how do we proceed? One approach to follow is to say that because you cannot write down the probability distribution function for the performance function analytically, you're going to have to approximate it in some way, which is to say that you have to come up with some approximation of the curve that describes the probability distribution function um, of G. The problem with this approach is that you're generally going to be interested in f very small failure probabilities, much smaller than what is illustrated over here. And because your approximation of this functional form is not going to be very accurate uh, in its representation of the of the of the tail of the distribution, you're invariably going to end up making large errors in your determination of the probability of failure. A more sensible approach is simply to recognize that the reason we re we require a distribution function for G is because it is a function of other parameters that are random variables, and so. Uh, instead of trying to come up with a univariate distribution for G, uh, rather describe the problem in directly in terms of the individual random variables that contribute to the uh, uncertainty in G. So we initially started off by saying that uh, G is just the difference between the resistance capacity and the load. But the resistance capacity in itself is generally determined as some model of material parameters and geometrical parameters. And, uh, and very often the load effect is also dependent on some additional parameters. So instead of trying to uh, write the, uh, the PDF, so instead of trying to write the distribution function of G, um, one could, uh, uh, or in fact trying to just write a bivariate distribution function in terms of R and E, the approach to follow is to write a, a multivariate distribution function directly in terms of the parameters that make up the resistance capacity and um, the load effect. Um, so, for example, in the case that uh, in the case of the steel rod that was in tension that we started off with, we could treat the cross-section area of the steel rod, the yield stress of the steel, uh, the imposed tensile load and other parameters as the random variables. So how do we treat this problem in a multivariate sense then? Let's again go back to the case where our resistance capacity um, is normally distributed with uh, with given parameters and our uh, load effect is also normally distributed with some given parameters. So in this admittedly this simplistic case, the limit state function where g is zero is given by this um, red line and values where g is smaller than zero, which is to say where failure occurs, um, is given by this, is, 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 is shown by this gray area. And then these contour lines uh, show values of the um, bivariate distribution function of R and E. So what we can do then is to transform R to a standard normal variable, UR, and E to a standard normal variable, UE, um, to, to, come up with, uh, to come up with the equivalent representation on the right here. And then if we consider the uh, if we then consider the values of the standard normal probability density function along the line of the limit state function, we see that the point along that line where the likelihood is at a maximum corresponds to the point where the limit state function is tangent to the contour lines, which is to say that point represents the closest approach along this line to the standard normal origin. We can then recognize that that the circular symmetry of the problem effectively reduces it to a one-dimensional problem, and that the module distribution along that vector of closest approach um, is a standard normal distribution 
uh, with a which overlaps with the failure region uh, at a specific distance from the origin. That distance of closest approach uh, will denote as beta can be calculated geometrically using the parameters that uh, we use to transform to standard normal variables uh, to end up with this equation, um, which you'll recognize as being identical to the equation we had earlier, where we also assumed uh, that our that R and E are normally distributed. This then suggests an alternative uh, definition for beta, which is the distance of closest approach in standard normal space of the limit state function to the origin, which is to say the smallest distance along the line where g is equal to zero from the origin. So, okay, so, so so let's consider this point of closest approach on the uh, limit state line a little more closely. That point is generally referred to as the design point. Uh, and given that the vector to the design point has length beta, the uh, components of that vector can be written as a product of the, of the direction of its direction cosines and its magnitude. Those direction cosines we will denote as alpha. What these alpha values also give you is an indication of the sensitivity of the reliability um, to each um, to each variable. You can imagine that if you had a, a limit state function uh, sitting like that, the reli reliability index would would be sensitive to changes in the parameters of R but not at all to, param to changes in the parameters of E. What is the effect of our original random variables uh, being dis uh, having distributions other than normal? So let's suppose that our resistance variable is log normally distributed and our loading variable has a Gumbel distribution. The first effect of this is that when we transform to standard normal space, our linear expression for the um, performance function and therefore for the line that gives us the limit state function um, is no longer linear because the transformation for R to U of R and the transformation for E to UE are not linear transformations. So the result of that is that what was a straight line in physical space is now a curved line in standard normal space. Now you'll notice though that if you compare that line to a straight line that is tangent to it at the design point, the largest discrepancies occur way over here and uh, over there in, in areas where the relative likelihood is extremely small. So as a result, the first order of having a nonlinear limit state uh, function um, does not have a, a large effect on the assumption of um, spherical symmetry and calculating the reliability as the point of closest approach. Nonetheless, it is useful to understand the effect of, of a nonlinear limit state line. So, so let's consider three cases. The first case we have um, is uh, the ideal case where the limit state function is a straight line corresponding to a beta value of exactly 3. If we now have a limit state line which is concave away from the origin, the effect of that is that there are areas which we are including in the failure region by, uh, by assuming that the, the limit state function is a straight line, which in fact are not in the failure region. So in this case, the beta value corresponding to the point of closest approach is again um, 3, uh, but the, the beta value that corresponds to the probability of failure calculated in this way is higher because the probability of failure is smaller. The opposite effect occurs if you have a, a, a limit state function which is concave towards the origin, um, in which case what you have are areas that you exclude from the failure region that should actually be in the failure region. The result of that is that the failure probability that you calculate using the point of closest approach would again correspond to a beta value of 3, uh, where the um, where the actual probability of failure uh, is higher and so corresponds to a smaller beta value. Uh, we should also consider the, the, the effect of correlation on the probability of failure. Um, 
So considered in real space, what correlation can do is to push areas of larger likelihood into the failure region uh, or or have the opposite effect of pulling areas of, of high likelihood out of the failure region. So as a result, this, this case on the left here will have a lower beta value than our reference uncorrelated case and the case on the right here will have a higher beta value.